morning, Prairie Trace Hawks. Hi, I'm Sierra. And I'm Anushka. And, and we are both from Mrs. Oz class. And, and welcome to this edition of WPTE. Wow, I can't believe that's almost the end of the year. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun. And now we have the joke of the day. Today we have Leland from third grade with the joke of the day. What is brown hairy and wears sunglasses? I don't know. What is brown hair and wear sunglasses? A coconut on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now back to the studio. That joke was so funny. Yeah, all of that laughing made me hungry. Sierra, what's for lunch today? Today's hot lunch is pasta with assorted sauces. Today's sandwich is chicken tender wrap and salad is taco salad. Do we have any birthdays today? Yes, today's birthdays are Caden Lai and Parker Shutt. Happy birthday! And now, next up is Sophia with the weather. What can we be expecting this weekend? Sophia, Sophia take, take it away! Thanks, Anushka and Sierra. I'm Sophia from Mrs. Oz class. Tomorrow there is going to be rain. Better get your umbrellas. But at least it will be a little warm because the temperature is in the 50s. On Saturday, there will be a thunderstorm and a lot of water pouring down. Better to get an umbrella and a coat. And finally, on Sunday, it's very cold, with a low of 32 degrees. Maybe you should stay inside, or maybe not, because it is a little sunny with the clouds blocking our sunlight. On Monday, it'll even snow. Is this spring break or winter break? And the day after that will be a bit sunny like Sunday. And the rest of the break in Indiana will be rainy. Unless you're going out of state, you won't have to experience any of the rain. But that's all for the weather. Now back to the studio! Thanks, Sophia. I was really hoping for some sun and warmth, though. Be sure to remember your umbrellas. Looks like a rainy break. Perfect for sitting inside and watching March Madness. Next up, we have John with sports. John, take it away! Thanks, Anushka and Sierra. Hey, I'm John with sports this week. This week in sports, the Pacers play Boston on Friday. Tip-off is at 7. On Saturday, they also play against Orlando. Tip-off is at 7. IU isn't in the NIT anymore, which means Purdue and the Pacers are the only Indiana teams still going. Speaking of Purdue, they're playing against Tennessee tonight. Tip-off is at 7.27. Go Pacers and Purdue! That's all for sports this week. Now back to the studio. Good luck to all our Indiana teams! Hey Sierra, did you know that Did You Know is next? No I didn't, but now I do. Abigail and Alex, take, take it away! Thanks Sierra and Anushka. Hi, I'm Abigail. Hi, I'm Alex. And, and welcome, welcome to this edition of Did You Know? Hey Alex, did you know that we share over 96% of our DNA with chimpanzees and 60% and with our chickens? I didn't know that, but did you know that more than 60% of our DNA is related to bananas? Bananas! Wow, that's amazing. I know, right? Who would have thought that we were related to a curved yellow fruit? Did you also know that in 1992, over 30,000 rubber ducks were lost at sea and are still being found today? Wow, I didn't know that, but now I do. Hey, Abigail, have you ever tried Doritos? Yeah, I love Doritos. Well, did you know that Doritos are flammable and can even be used as kindling? Wow, I better carry my Doritos when I'm camping just in case. Yeah, me too. Hey, Alex, do you like to read books? Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. Same here, but did you know that the Guinness Book of World Records is the most stolen book from public libraries? Really? I didn't know that, but I do know that 96% of people like those books. Wow, I know I'm definitely one of those people. Me too. Before we have to go back, did you know that if a man doesn't shave or trim his beard, it can grow to be over 30 feet long? Ugh, disgusting. Well, Abigail, did you know that it's time to go back to Anushka and Sierra in the studio? No, I didn't, but now I do. Now, now back, back to, to the studio! Did you seriously have Wow, I can't believe that we share so much of our DNA with chimpanzees and bananas. Next up is Olive and Jeremy with National Days. What can we celebrate today? Olive, Olive and Jeremy, Jeremy take it away! Thank you, Anushka and Sierra. Hi, I'm Olive. And I'm Jeremy. And we're, we're here, here with, with National, National Days. Days. Hey, Jeremy, guess what? What? It's National Children's Picture Book Day. I, I guess I'll read a picture book today. Uh, I think I'll read a picture book too. Olive, do you know what else can we can celebrate today? Nope. It's National Black Forest Cake Day. Wow, I love Black Forest Cake. It's delicious. I also like Black Forest Cake. Hey Olive, it's also National Respect Your Cat Day. 
Personally, I don't really like cats, but if you have cats at home, you should respect them today. It's also National Something on the Stick Day, so make sure you put something on the stick. Well, that's all for National Days. We, we hope, hope you can, can celebrate, celebrate these National, national days. days. Now, now back, back to, to the, the studio. studio. Oh my gosh, I love Black Forest cake. It's amazing. I've never had Black Forest cake, but it sounds delicious. And now we have Sophia with Lost and Found. Sophia, Sophia take, take it away! Thanks, Anushka and Sierra. I'm Sophia, and welcome to Lost and Found. Here, we have a fedora, very fashionable for every occasion. And what else would go better with a fedora than something pink and fuzzy? If you lost these keychains key or green dye, then come down and claim it. Make sure to stay hydrated this weekend with a water bottle. Drinking enough water is very important. Staying warm is also crucial. Use this jacket and glove to avoid potentially life-threatening hypothermia. Do you like Star Wars? Well, if you do, Make sure to get your five minute Star Wars stories and may the force be with you. We also have this Charlie Bean book over here. If these books belong to you, come down and claim it. Over here we have this two lovely pink and yellow bandanas from our Leeship Boot Camp. You don't want to go on spring break without these. Now we have these beautiful gold shoes. I don't think you want to lose these. Wow, look at this gorgeous sparkly black vest. I'm sure I wouldn't look, want to leave this at school over spring break. If this is yours, come and claim it. And finally, we have this blue hat. You don't want to forget this upcom these upcoming weeks, whether as you heard me say earlier. Come down and claim your items today. Remember, all those and found items will be donated during spring break. So come here before we send your personal belongings to a charity. Now back to the studio. Remember to look at all the lost and found items before you head out for spring break. Next up, we have Megan with the author, Victoria J. Co. Take, Take it away. Hi, I'm Megan from Mrs. Oz class. I had the honor of interviewing author Victoria Coe today. What is it like being an author? Um, well, I'm so happy to be with you, Megan. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. Um, you know, being an author is a dream that I had had and had been working toward for many, many years. And, you know, what does that involve but writing and writing books? And finally, um, my first book, Fenway and Hattie, was published. And you know what's really funny about being an author is it's a job that you do by yourself. Oh, okay. So I write alone, you know, with my laptop. Even if I'm in a coffee shop or an airport, it's still just me. And so since I became an author, I've had the chance to visit schools, which I now do all the time. It is my number one favorite thing to do because I get to be with people like you, and I get to be with readers and educators, and, and it's not, it, it's sharing, you know. It's not like being alone. Yeah. What are your favorite books other than the ones you've written? Um, so I have a lot of favorite books and it's really hard to choose, but um, I think I'll always go back to my favorite books from when I was in elementary school because I love to share those books and they have such a special place in my heart. And um, they're the books by my favorite author, Beverly Cleary. Oh, I think Do you like her too? Yeah. So um, my favorites were the Henry Huggins and Ribsy books and Ribsy, Henry's dog, he has his own book called Ribsy. So that's really my favorite, um, but I also love the Ramona books and I really love The Mouse and the Motorcycle. Um, and th there's a series of three books about that too. I read those. They're so good, right? I know. What is the process of writing a book and how long does it usually take? You know, it takes a really long time to write a book. I mean, in fact, most people I think would be surprised how long it takes. And I myself, am, I think of myself as a slow writer. So this was my first book, Fenway and Hattie, and it took me about two and a half years just of the actual writing before it even got to my publisher, and then I spent another year revising it with my editor. These two books went, a and this book, which is the fourth Fenway and Hattie, um, went a little bit faster, but that's only because I already knew those characters, and I already knew Fenway's voice, but I'm working on a story right now 
which may or may not ever become a real book. And I have been working on it for more than a year and a half. And I only just finished the first draft like two months ago. Oh. So I'm revising it now and it just seems like it will take forever. But it's because it, it takes so much work and so much revision to make a story the very best it can be. Nobody's first draft is it's finished. Perfect. It's yeah. uh, not only perfect, it's never finished. It's not ready, it's not strong. So it's really important to revise. Of course. Do you have any advice for young writers? Well, other than the reality to know that your first draft is okay. not your final draft. Um, but yeah, um, I do have a lot of advice. Um, my first, first two pieces of advice are, one, read. The more you read, the more those stories will get into you and you'll just sort of know what makes a great character, what makes a great story. It'll just become a part of you. And then the second thing I always say is to have a writer's notebook. You should always have a writer's notebook, not at school, but have something you can keep at home, even if it's only this big. I always have a notebook because I actually use it as an extension of my brain. Like I do brainstorming and I think of ideas and notes. And another thing that I want to say um, to you and to everyone watching is that I actually have a video series of writing tips oh. for students. There's 25 videos and if you go to my homepage, victoriajco.com, um, on the lower right hand side you'll see a button that you can click and it'll take you to my YouTube channel and you'll see all the videos there. Great. What inspired you to write Fenway and Hattie? So Fenway and Hattie was actually inspired by a real thing that happened in my family. Um, in the summer of 2011 we were getting ready to move and we were putting a lot of our stuff in the garage because the moving van was going to be coming and it wasn't even that day but we were just doing a lot of that and our dog Kipper freaked he freaked out like he knew something was going on but he didn't know what it was and um, he ended up getting into the car which we had moved into the driveway I don't remember how he got in but he wouldn't get out and he was just shaking just shaking like he was terrified we all knew he was scared but we couldn't get him out so we had to go about our business getting ready to move and it just really kind of broke my heart a little bit because I thought you know he thinks we're not gonna bring him with us <sighs> You know, yeah. like he must have thought, well, if I get in the car, then I'll already be there and they have to take me. And so I couldn't stop thinking about that. And so in the days that followed, it really got it. It took over my imagination. And I started to ask myself, could this be a character, not my real dog Kipper, but could there be a character who was a dog who was that insecure <laughs> that he was afraid when his family was moving that they were going to abandon him? And that actually became the first chapter yeah. of Fenway and Hattie. read about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and finally, can you share any fun facts about yourself? Oh my gosh. So, um, a couple of fun things that I, I would like to share is um, my friend Ellie Swartz, who was another children's author, and I, um, we do a web series together called Books in the Kitchen, and you can also get to that from my website. We actually have a, our own channel called um, Books in the Kitchen, where we bake and we <laughs> and we talk about books and we, we and we dance while we're waiting for the oh, okay. cookies to bake because we hate waiting. So that's really fun, and we do outtakes too because we mess up a lot. <laughs> we mess up a lot, so okay. I think you would enjoy that. It's both of us that we mess up a lot. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being here today. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. I'm honored. Oh, now back to the studio and we do this. This was a great edition of WPTE. We, we will end with the national anthem, leadership pledge, and a moment of silence. We hope you have a great spring break. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the prairie. Oh. To honor America and perform our national anthem, Please welcome three-time Grammy winner, Pink. i
As a Prairie Trace elementary leader to have a positive attitude each day. I will make good choices even when no one is looking. I will demonstrate the eight habits to make myself and my school an amazing place. 